Hey everyone, it's Zach Beck. The US government racked up a record $3.1 trillion budget deficit during the last fiscal year. Now this was in large part due to the pandemic, as well as the amount of spending they allocated into the economy in order to prevent ourselves from going into a depression. Now according to the Department of Treasury, we have 15.2% of our GDP as deficit spending. This has significant implications for taxes, investments, stocks, bonds, and overall the economic outlook for the global economy as a a whole based off of what is happening with our spending here in the United States. So what I want to do in this video is talk about what this means for you and myself, how we should be planning right now to prepare ourselves for the future so that we can achieve our financial goals. So let's jump into this right now. As previously mentioned, the government had to allocate a significant amount of money into the economy. This prevented us from going into a depression, but it also cost a lot to the taxpayers. What we actually found is that by allocating things like the CARES Act, as well as other relief measures that were put into place by Congress, it amounted to $2.4 trillion according to the Congressional Budget Office. Now, this was the most amount of deficit spending that we had done in the United States of America since World War II. And when we look at the total amount the government had to output in this last fiscal year, it amounted to $6.55 trillion, whereas the amount of income taxes that we received, the amount of corporate taxes that we received, and all the other revenue that actually came into the government was only $3.42 trillion, which leads to that overall deficit of $3.1 trillion we are encountering right here, right now. So with all that being said, we're finding a substantial change transpiring in our economy. On that note, the government saw significant declines in the amount of revenue it was receiving from key sources. First, you found that the income taxes dropped from 1.7 trillion to 1.6 trillion this year in the amount of revenue going to the government. In addition, when it comes to corporate income tax, that fell from $230 billion all the way down to $212 billion. So we're seeing these declines specifically because people are losing income, corporations are shedding profit, and we're overall seeing some negative economic cha challenges that we're facing right now. And as it relates to that, we're seeing how this was gonna actually impact our bottom line when it comes to our personal investments. So that's why we're seeing a slightly inflated economy right now that isn't reflecting these specific numbers right here. So it's important for us to understand what this overall economic picture is looking like because it's going to forecast long term for where we're going to go as a country and as an economy as a whole. It's clear that we need to address this budget deficit and get on a more sustainable pathway moving forward. However, the amount of tax increases and spending cuts that would be required in order to address this issue are significant. And as a result of that, I believe they should be delayed until after this pandemic subsides. Because right now, the Congressional Budget Office is saying that we're not going to see any budget deficits below $1 trillion for the next 10 years. So this is gonna have significant implications when we think about long-term, our taxes are probably going to increase and overall spending is probably going to decrease and overall that is going to lead to lower quality services and higher costs as taxpayers. So we should be planning accordingly when it comes to our investment strategies and how we're allocating our money accordingly right now. Now you might be facing a really challenging circumstance right now. Perhaps you were laid off, perhaps you were furloughed, you're dealing with a health related issue, or overall you're just dealing with the stress associated with this pandemic and the uncertainty that lies ahead. So my encouragement to you is to try and do everything you can to position yourself in a manner where you are actually in control of your finances, if you are deep in debt, if you are able to live anything beyond paycheck to paycheck, then it's hard for you to imagine what a tax increase long term is going to mean for yourself, let alone being able to invest in the stock market. So I know these big picture headlines that come across the news feed that we see where we have $3.1 trillion budget deficits is really jarring and significant, but sometimes we don't relate to it because it seems so out there. But if you and I understand what our personal financial situation is, it allows us to be positioned long term in a more sustainable pathway personally so we're not running deficits, we're not getting into debt, and that allows us to achieve our financial and personal goals. So my encouragement is to not be dismayed or discouraged by the deficits being run up by the government, but to understand what they mean and how it's going to impact you and myself directly. When it comes to deficits and spending, I believe it's important to note that Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and Nancy Pelosi are currently in negotiations right now trying to address this issue by actually spending more money and stimulating the economy further. And what we have seen is that the House has passed numerous iterations of what's called the HEROES Act, the Senate has passed what's called the HEALS Act, and the President has not signed any piece of legislation because those two sides have not agreed yet. But what is important to note is that the government is probably gonna spend a couple trillion dollars more once this is all said and done, 
only further adding to our deficit as a whole. So once again, we are gonna be dealing with deficits for quite some time. So what you and I can do right now personally is understand the basic financial principles that we should be applying every single day and actually continue to apply those so that way we make sure we don't find ourselves in a long-term situation where we're running debts or running a deficit. So here are a few things that you and I can do right here, right now. First is to cut spending. Do everything you can to cut out areas of your life that aren't necessary when it comes to either bringing you joy or fulfilling your basic needs. Now there are areas of life that are important that you wanna spend money on when you're spending time with friends or family, but try and cut out areas that are unnecessary and I'll leave those up to you because you can only determine what's best for your life. As it relates to cutting spending, you want to do everything you can to avoid debt. Now, debt is something that can only really be done in a manner where it's safe when it comes to looking at something like a mortgage. And even then, if you're able to go in a different route, I might recommend that as well because debt just holds over your head long term. So if you can avoid it, it's going to be better long term so you can actually build wealth instead of paying all of your money to companies, credit cards, and other corporations that are going to take it and use it to build skyscrapers in other countries. In addition, try to avoid lifestyle inflation. Now, lifestyle inflation is basically where you and I try and spend more money as we earn more money. Now this is an easy trap to fall into and it's something that happens just naturally. What you're going to find is that as you get more raises, as you receive a promotion, if you receive some sort of a windfall, you might start driving a nicer car, you might live in a nicer home, you might be going out to eat more frequently, you might do certain things that on paper really aren't necessarily the worst thing because they do bring a little bit of joy to your life, but if you're financing them through debt and you're not actually being able to pay cash for them, it might not really be the best thing because we don't need to put on appearances out and society. We just need to know what we're doing internally to provide for our families to have a fulfilling and joy-filled life. Another thing you want to do is actually be more active and intentional to try and have your money grow by investing it strategically. So I specifically like to invest into what are called index funds because they grow over time long term at about a 5 to 8% annual return. And that to me is a safe approach to take. There are clearly other ways you can go, specifically investing in real estate, investing in individual stocks, investing in yourself. There are other avenues you can apply and I think that's actually a good thing to do as well. But the safest bet is really going through more of an index fund which is a passive approach to your investment strategy strategy. Now, when you look at the overall spending the government is doing, you might think about wanting to have your money in a high interest savings account or going and placing your money into bonds. Thinking about long term when you're getting a government bond, that is something that's supposed to be secured 10 years down the road and it's going to yield you a certain amount. But overall, bonds are going to be a little bit lower because of the amount of deficit that we have here in the United States as a whole. Furthermore, when you look at high interest savings accounts, if we're gonna to continue to have a deficit here in the United States, our high interest savings account are probably gonna remain low because the Federal Reserve is keeping interest rates near 0% and according to Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, they're gonna stay at 0% for quite some time, probably until 2023 or 2024. So when we think about all these things in the grand picture, we just wanna do everything we can personally and not get caught up in what is happening nationally or globally when it comes to the spending that's going on from governments that right now are going really out of their way to spend more money than they can. So from that perspective, I just wanna encourage you to stay diligent, to be mindful of what you're doing so you can achieve your financial goals long-term and achieve everything you want in your personal life. With all that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. If you wouldn't mind, please like the video. That'd help the channel out for the YouTube algorithm, help push this video to other people who might need to hear it. In addition, if you have any questions, please comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, get to know you, answer any questions on your behalf, and do any research on your behalf to help you make wise and well-informed decisions. And in addition to that, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to myself personally as I do everything I can to create content that has a meaningful impact in your life by encouraging you and myself to lead lives of meaning and purpose, all while maintaining balance and moderation. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please tap the notification bell. That will notify you every time I post a video, which I do on a weekly basis. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. I look forward to talking to you next time. Have a great day.